Hello everyone, so in this video we're going to learn how to do calculus in polar coordinates. Okay, so let's start by looking at how to calculate the arc length of a polar curve. So suppose that you want to find the length of the polar curve r equals to some function f of theta for theta between a and b. So first let's see uh, what that looks like. So we have a polar curve r equals f theta, which is something like that, whatever it is. And we want to calculate the length of that curve, but between theta equals a and theta equals to b. So what is this uh, region of the curve? So remember that theta equals to a uh, corresponds to a line that goes through the origin, so some sort of ray that goes through the origin. So we have one value of theta, say theta equals to a, and another one, something like that, which is theta equals to b. So what we want to calculate is the arc length of the curve between these two values of theta. All right, so how can we do that? Well, the idea is, uh, just as we did before when we calculated the slope of tangent lines, is to consider the curve as being a parametric curve in Cartesian coordinates. So remember that x is equal to r cos theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. So if you think of r now as a function of theta, this defines a parametric curve where you think of theta as your parameter. So with this in mind, we can calculate the length just using what we uh, calculated when we looked at parametric curves. So this is the integral between a and b, the different values of the parameter theta, of the square root of dx d theta square plus dy d theta square with respect to theta. But it turns out that we can actually go a little further because things simplify nicely when we use this, uh, these values of x and y. So let's see how that goes. So let's calculate dx d theta and dy d theta. So dx d theta will be given uh, by the product rule applied to r cos theta. So I get dr d theta cos theta minus r sine theta. And for dy d theta, I'll get dr d theta sine theta plus r cos theta. So now I can calculate what I have inside the square root here. So I'll take the square of these expressions and add them up. What do I get? So I get something quite complicated. So let me expand the squares directly. So for the square of the first term, I'll get dr d theta square times cosine square of theta. Then I get the cross term, which is minus 2r dr d theta sine theta cos theta. Then I get the square of the second term, so plus r square sine square theta. And that's for the dx d theta square. For the dy d theta square, I'll get dr d theta square sine square theta. And then I get the cross term, 2r dr d theta sine theta cos theta. And finally, the last term, which is r square cos square theta. All right, but now things simplify nicely. This term cancels with this one. And you see that the first term, this one and this one, are just dr d theta square times sine square of theta plus cos square of theta. So that becomes just dr d theta square. And then the two other terms also combined because I have r squared times sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, so I just get r squared. So putting all of that together, we get a nice expression for the arc length of a polar curve. So we'll get the integral from a to b of the square root, and then what remains, namely r squared plus dr d theta squared integrated with respect to theta. Now you have to remember here that r is itself a function of theta. All right, so let's apply that in an example. So let's find the length of the cardioid r is equal to 1 plus sine of theta. All right, so we want to find the length of the whole thing here. So we want to, to integrate from theta equals to 0, which is this point, all the way to the same point, which corresponds to theta equals to 2 pi. So here, what we want to do is calculate this with theta going between 0 and 2 pi. All right, so we can just use what we've calculated. So the length of the curve here will be the integral between 0 
and 2 pi of the square root of r square plus dr d theta square with respect to theta. So I just need to substitute r equals to 1 plus sine theta for the cardioid. So r square becomes 1 plus sine theta square. And dr d theta in this case is cosine of theta. So I get plus cos square of theta d theta. Can simplify things a little bit. So I can expand the square here. I'll get 1 plus 2 sine theta plus sine square of theta. I still have my cosine square of theta. Now you see that the two last terms inside the square root combine to give 1. So I end up with the integral of from 0 to 2 pi, the square root of 2 plus 2 sine theta d theta. And now you have to integrate that. So I will skip this step here for the integration. I'll let you do that, or you can always use Wolfram alpha if you want to check. And the final result, as you can calculate, is exactly 8. So the length of the cardioid turns out to be precisely 8. All right, so as a second application, I'd like to study how to calculate the area under a polar curve. So what do we mean by under? So what I mean is, is the following. I want to find the area of the region which is bounded by a polar curve and the two lines theta equals to a and theta equals to b. So in the picture, if I have my polar curve here, r equals to f theta, then I have the two rays theta equals to a and theta equals to b. And I want to calculate the area of the region which is enclosed by these curves. All right, so how do I do that? Well, the idea is to slice the problem, as always. So what I'll do is first look at a typical slice and then sum over slices. Okay, so but how do I want to slice the problem here? So I want to think of theta as the corner. So I want to slice my region into uh, little sectors in theta. So I want to define a typical slice as being something like this for, for a very small angle of theta. Now as a first approximation, I can think of that as being, uh, so the, the area here as being the area of a sector of a circle of radius r uh, with angle d theta. Right? This is d theta. So in other words, the area of my typical slice will be the area of the sector radius r. Remember that r is a function of theta, so as I move around this will change, uh, of a little sector of angle d theta with radius r. Now the area of such a sector is always given by 1 half r squared times the angle, which we take to be d theta. That's a general formula, right? The area of the sector of a circle is always 1 half times r squared times the angle of the sector. And that gives me the area of a typical slice. Now, of course, I need to remember here that r is a function of theta. So I could rewrite that as being 1 half f of theta squared d theta. All right, so that was the first step. This is the typical slice. And then the second step is to sum over slices, which, of course, means integrating when we send d theta to 0. So I end up with the statement that the area is the integral from theta equals a to theta equals b of dA, which is just 1 half r squared d theta. And that's the general formula for calculating the area of a region enclosed by a polar curve and two lines theta equals to a and theta equals to b. All right, so we can apply this in the example of the cardioid. Suppose that you want to calculate the area of the cardioid. So this is the area of the whole region here. So what is this? Well, this is the area that is enclosed or bounded by the cardioid curve, r equals 1 plus sine theta, and theta going all the way from 0 to 2 pi, which corresponds to tracing the whole curve. All right, so I can use the formula I've just derived. So the area here will be equal to 1 half the integral from 0 to 2 pi of r squared d theta. But of course, I think of r as a function of theta. So I get 1 half integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 plus sine theta square d theta. And again, I'll skip the steps here of integration. It's relatively relatively straightforward, or you can ask Wolfram Alpha to do it. And the answer in this case should be 3 pi over 2. So this is the area of the cardioid. All right, so that's it for today.